We're good to go. His name is Ryan McFadden. Uh, we're gonna have a fucking great time today. Pardon my language. Uh, we're gonna have a wonderful time today. Uh, we got a few different things to talk about. Some very important issues. This is the show where we like to talk about the issues that many other shows don't want to talk about. One thing I notice out there is there's so many other podcasts. You can literally look online. Just type into Google podcast and then go up to the search tools up at the top and look at the literally change the videos. Go to the search tools and look at the past week. Just type in podcasts in the past week of podcasts that have come up. And look for people that got, I don't say crappy podcasts because that's definitely not what we have here. But people that are doing podcasts on their own that may look maybe a little homemade. Look at 99.9% of all of those podcasts. They are not talking about anything of any kind of importance. They're, they're talking about, and I'm not, I don't want to say, to them it's probably important. And to a, a probably a, uh, not a majority, a, a group of people, a minority out there. Today at school, Becky kissed Jimmy, and it was well, so not awesome. Even that. It, that, that's a very, very minority group. That, but you that do get those that come up I'm in those searches. About, <laughs> you know, I'm talking about a, a group, a, a, a show like me and you, which I trust me, I thought about doing it on our show, but it's like, it's not important enough. It's really like, it's not uh, a social issue that needs to be addressed. It is like, uh, the only time I'll ever want to get into it is maybe if there's any kind of a any kind of corruption involved or, or rigging involved, but it's like people who have a sports podcast where they're just sitting there talking about, we like the Giants, man! Go Giants! Well, I don't like yeah. the Giants and I don't want to talk <laughs> about the Giants, okay? So, um, but it's also like, and, and no offense to you, I know you're, you're a video game fan and have been a uh, professional video gamer, but it's like, do you know how many podcasts out there are literally dedicated to video games? There are thousands. Yes. Thousands of podcasts where the people will continue to make the podcasts, and it's only about video games. It's strictly only talking about video games. Sometimes they're a little bit interesting. I've watched a couple of them. Trust me, I'm interested in, in what other people do when they're, they're putting in work into a podcast to make sure that I'm not replicating what other people are doing. Whereas to me, it's like... Are you doing anything important? Are you like, is this going anywhere? Is it is it is it trying to well, achieve one, a certain goal, or is it just to talk about video games, or just to talk about sports, or whatever? That for the most part, you're pretty much that. spot on there. Um, there is one put out by Beyond Entertainment that actually deals exclusively with the competition settings for whatever upcoming tournaments, team changes, things like that. Yeah. That's kind of important to the community. It's important to the but community. But the other ones but are the, basically exactly what I'm are talking just, about. The new game came out and this map overall, sucks. And, well, that's like, that's basically the same thing as saying... Uh, that's basically the same. That's thing like as, saying you're a wakeboarding champion. I well, mean, exactly. nobody cares. It's <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. It's um, it's important. That's like basically saying like on a sports show where like you're, you you want to talk about stats on a sports show. Yeah, there's a lot of people, especially yeah. with fantasy football. That's very important to a lot of people. But in the grand scope of things, is it, it means important? nothing when it comes to the Pacific Garbage Patch or the Great Pacific Garbage Patch or homelessness and poverty and 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 um, starvation around the world. Like, does that have any like the, what is that doing to, to help address those issues to bring any attention to those issues? It's not yeah, absolutely it's, nothing. It's it's people just falling falling right into the whole distraction mode of like all this all these distractions, especially us Americans, we're given all these distractions and we. 
we hook, hook on these distractions and then sometimes we're even like, oh, I want to make a show about these distractions. I want to do my own radio show about these distractions. Instead of saying, let's, like, what is it like, and that's what's ir- like, like irks me about it. It's like, what are your kids really going to look at it? How are your kids are really going to look at it? And unless things change, like, the sad part is a lot of those people's kids are going to be like, oh, that's cool that they did yep. that. Whereas my kids, if I things don't interrupt. change, may be like, what was, your, what was the point of even doing that? Like, nobody cared about that stuff back then. So why would – but it's like somebody needed to care. Like how the founding, founding fathers were like a very small minority of people who really cared about it. Well – we if are, they had the technology to do a podcast back then, it would have been a been, great podcast. They, but they would have been doing a podcast. Exactly. But it may have been very, very much like how our podcast is, where it's it's a lot of times, or our type of podcast and people who do our type of podcast, it's hard to really you, you can find yourself a nice thousand fan base, thousand member fan base, or even ten thousand fan member base. But it's very hard to get into the hundreds of thousands and and the millions of fans for your show because. There's not that many people who are really that interested in the issues that matter. They'd yeah. rather talk about Kim Kardashian or The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones or the the NFL yeah. game last week or search, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Punch or in Advanced Google Warfare, or YouTube. Like, Just punch in Google or YouTube and you can find literally weekly podcasts, sometimes daily, just about TV shows, reality yeah. shows, yeah. things like that. This week on Survivor... So and so, who do you think is going to be eliminated? Blah 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 blah. Well, the worst I think, honestly, who cares? the worst that I've seen are the hangout podcasts, and I, I did oh. a hangout podcast called Grown Up Stuff Podcast. And honestly, when it comes to hangout podcast, uh, um, if you don't know what hangout is, it's a, uh, it's it's now a part of YouTube, but it's also a part of Google is or Google Plus, where you can hang out with multiple different different people in the same kind of like all on the same screen like you it's kind of like skype but you can have five or six different people and everybody's pictures down at the bottom right well um you saw a lot of hangout podcasts uh popping up and i thought ours was uh the grown-up stuff was was half decent compared to a lot of the other ones because if you start looking into the hangout podcasts you'll find just literally a lot of teenagers just and they they don't even they're not even really like it's not like they all go to school together or anything like that they're just, just I hate to call them people. nerds but they're just kids who don't really have much else to do and have have found other people who don't really have much else to do but have like a common interest whether whether it be a video game whether it be Dragon Ball Z whether it be <laughs> something stu- it's usually the stupidest stuff but they all have a common interest and they do a podcast together and they don't even talk about the common interest they barely even talk about the common interest it's literally just a show of them chit-chatting back and forth and it's like well yeah i know it's like some like 13 year old kid like yeah i know like i can't stand when that's, <laughs> that ha- that happens you know like sometimes I'll, I'll go to plug in my phone and and when i plug in my phone it's like it doesn't even want to act like it's really getting charged and i can't stand when that happens and then there's like another little girl like yeah i know like that's that sucks you know like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. That happens to my phone, and I don't want to have to deal with that. But it's like, <laughs> what do I get a new charger? And it's like, really? Like nobody cares about your stupid bickering. It's like that's where we've gotten. Where so many people have seen reality TV become successful, where they think, okay, well, just me being me and and just yeah. talking is just what people want to watch. And they don't even pay attention if anybody's even watching it. But the saddest part is when it comes to video game podcasts and sports podcasts and all that people want to watch it that's the saddest part so these podcasts i hate to say they suck i'm not putting most of them down but the what the the content that they're bringing to the people is content that is regurgitated day after day by everybody at work everybody in society everybody on tv you know what i'm saying you can't you can't literally can't watch the news without being sports being brought up you know what i'm saying like i I guarantee you within the past week or, or the past month sorry the past month or two months uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare has been mentioned on the news or, or on a on a non video game cable network. I guarantee you it's been mentioned because or and there's commercials like crazy on TV about it. When is there ever a commercial for anything about Ron Paul's uh, Liberty Institute? Um, well, they tried to bury Ron Paul, so I don't exactly. think that commercial would ever air if it even existed. Exactly. So honestly, when it when it comes to our show, I'm not sitting here trying to like uh, toot our own horn or anything like that. We've we've got a lot of work to do, and we've got a uh, especially studio wise. Uh, anybody to watching, Ron do. Paul is not the loony whatever they tried to make him out to be. He's a very intelligent man. You should look at some of his speeches and read some of what he's written and listen to what the man has to say. Well. I think when it comes to that, and then I think we'll move on to our uh, our 
topics of the, the week, that the, which actually tie into this, believe it or not. Um, when it comes to that, Ron Paul is, and it was good to have Ron Paul as a representative of that, Ron Paul is a, basically a, the new generation of politics. The new generation of politics is come in and speak the truth. Yeah. Come in, speak the truth about what's going on and what needs to happen. And after that truth is spoken, you, there's only so much you can do about actually getting it done because of the way the political system is set up and the way that the old politics are still, for the most part, in charge. But you have to come in and you have to expose and do what you can. You have to speak the truth. You can't blow smoke up people's asses. And you have to at least try to do the right thing. Whereas so many other politicians, the old politicians, the old style politicians, like I'm just I'm saying there's two styles of politicians yep. now. The old style politician says what everybody wants to hear when it comes to when it's campaign time. And then when it's actually time to perform and, does the and follow up, does the opposite, but then does either one or two things during their tenure of being in whatever seat they're in, does one or two things that they know the public will appreciate or that the public will like. Even though they're doing other things like raising taxes and maybe even embezzling and who knows, there's so much corruption and stuff that goes on, right? But they do one or two good things either for the community or for the people or or they they do do stuff like uh, there's a lot of people who think like everything they do is corrupt everything they do no they actually do stuff that they think is the good thing or the right thing but it's like i would much rather see them not give a damn about that stuff and actually fulfill their promises and 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 actually start You're believing, in the, zone, start believing <laughs> the crap that they were spewing when they were running for office and believing that maybe they should actually start trying some of that yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they, a lot of times you'll see a politician who sounds like they, when they're running for office, they sound like they really want to do the right thing. And they're, they're your honest politician. They're your honest local politician. Then they get into office and you're like, oh, no, he was just a businessman. And yeah. he's, he's just being a businessman now still. And we're kind of stuck with him. And so let's hope that next time and it's like, no, like we, the, what's good is the new generation of politics is coming in. And Ron Paul represented the new generation of politics. And that was... There, that People was, like Ron Paul, Ted Cruz are starting to really Yeah, it's sad because uh, a lot of people associate Rand Paul also with that, and Rand Paul is definitely... I don't, he is not his father. I, he's not his father, but I, wouldn't, I also wouldn't associate him with the new generation of politics. The new generation of politics right now, that's why it was good to have Ron Paul on a national stage, but since he's left the national stage, I don't believe there's really... I don't want to say anybody on the national stage because I'm sure there's a couple people that... I mean, there's Jesse Ventura, but they're trying to bury him. But he's not even... I'm talking about in a actual... Like, Ron Paul's still on the national stage if you want to bring up Jesse Ventura. I'm talking about somebody who's actually still in a political position or or still in political power in some way, shape, or form. 2016, if Ventura makes it into the White House... Yeah, if Ventura makes it into the White House, but that's not going to happen. We're going to see good changes. But that's not going to happen. I know, they won't won't let it happen. They will kill Jesse Ventura... Before he gets into the White House, before yes. he steps foot into the White House as the President of the United States, they will kill Jesse. Because he's Trump. already seen too much as a Navy And the saddest theater. part is, that right there, and like that's what's important about our show, is that we're willing to step out here and actually, it's, and people, a lot of people would say, that's stupid, I can't believe you would even say that. But we're all willing to step out here and put our lives on the line by saying something that sounds so absurd like that, but it is the absolute truth. When you pay attention and you see the how Ron Paul was was how the direction that Ron Paul was heading in 2012 and the fact that there was a very good chance that maybe he wasn't going to win the presidency but he was going to be on the ballot just as much as oh, Ross yeah. Perot was in the talks and on the ballots in, in oh, yeah. 1992 and 1996 I believe right he would have been right there in the forefront the difference between then when Ross Perot was running and 2012 when Ron Paul ran is the system has become so corrupt that it did not allow Ron Paul to reach any sort of a successful stage of you're going to be on the ballot. You actually have a chance. He wasn't even allowed into most of the debates. He wasn't allowed into – well, he was allowed into some debates. And, and some, yes. But. Some debates. There were some he was kept out of. But it's more – I don't know. It's more just it, – it, it's – I don't. I don't even know how to explain well, it. I want to say it's sad right that now, people so. don't care about it, but it's really people don't even realize it. 
Man, I, I don't have time to, to look at, look at how they're trying to demonize well, that's, that's all the survivors part. on. Well, that's the saddest part is if the you really – that's how you know that even during election time when, it, when everybody acts like they're paying attention. What's with these cement? political commercials? I'm trying to watch the game. Nobody's paying attention. When it comes to election time, and I'm talking about national election for, for our presidential for, – for the president – um, nobody is actually paying attention. They well, act obvious. like they're paying attention, but they're paying attention by watching CNN or watching mainstream media, MSNBC or Fox News. They're watching mainstream media and reading articles on Yahoo and reading articles on MSN and reading articles on on. I hate to say Google because Google. Which I'll tell really you later on, on why those are so. not accurate sources for information. Exactly, but. They rely on those and don't actually look into candidates and issues yep. for themselves. And they're told what they, su- they should believe, whether they're Republican or Democrat or even somewhat independent, kind of what independents believe or, or what third party candidates believe. Well, this but is the obvious. Third party candidates are much more likely to look into their own stuff or, or to look into their candidates and look into the issues themselves. Third party candidates are much more oh, yeah. likely to know those issues. Hence, maybe why third party candidates. Or third party, the whole third party system, or the whole third party altogether, in a nutshell, it has no chance ever yeah. in the past 50 years, I don't think, has had a chance whatsoever of actually winning an election. Well, even if they win the popular vote, which I, I've seen it come close, I've never ever seen any states, like through the Electoral College, throw votes to a third party candidate. Yeah, no. In don't. my lifetime. They don't, because it's a two-party dictatorship. It really yes. is. All right, so we'll move on. And they're the same party, but that's another I, story. I, I just <laughs> wanted basically to say how I really believe we have something good here because we are actually approaching issues that a lot of other shows wouldn't even be willing to touch. Like, we're, we're going to have – I know you're, you're not 100% – ready for it, let's just say. I don't want to say you're not 100% comfortable, because I know you will be 100% comfortable with it. I don't know if you're 100% ready for it, but we will have it in, in due time. I'm hoping before the new year, or at least shortly after the new year, we're going to have a religion episode. And so many, like I don't know of any other podcast I could think of out there that would be willing to touch on religion. And, and a lot of people are going to see that episode, and I think that's going to bring a lot of people to watch it. They're going to see that episode or see that we're coming up on that episode, that we announced that episode, and they're going to watch it to think that we're demonizing their religion. And the good thing about the way that we're going to handle that is we may give some cons of what religion has. Religion, I'm not talking about faith. I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about religion, man-made religion. And, and I don't say blind servitude or blind following of religion because that makes it sound like cons but the good parts that have come from religion and the bad parts that have come from religion and all of the religions and how a lot of them are somewhat the same and a lot of them do have many differences but there's also some misconceptions about a lot of religions out there you know like there's a misconception about buddhism that buddhism they are completely anti-violent and it's like if you really look into that buddha there's buddhist monks And they're Buddhist monks. Like, what? This is crazy to hear. But there's Buddhist monks that have been responsible for the genocide of a people or, like, the genocide of a village or, or like, a a small nation or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. But they were responsible for mass murder, basically, in so many words. And it's like Buddhist monks. They were Buddhist assassins back in the day. Buddhist monks. Like, Buddhism's not violence. How are you murdering people? And same with, like, um, Islam and Muslim is there's a lot of people who believe that it's a religion of, Violence and 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 comfort, com, converting the world into Islam and and taking over the world and spreading hate and destruction. And Actually, true Islam is very tolerant and peaceful. Exactly. And and I I told told somebody uh, pretty close to me probably maybe a month ago. Uh, they were talking about how Islam wants to bring. Uh, destruction to America. Islam's is is a because that's what religion. the mainstream media exactly. is telling but, us. But right. And this this person who's close to me is, is quite uh, religious, quite Christian, right? Um, but they, uh, I, I stopped them when they were saying that, and I said, well, actually, that's a misconception. Islam and, and Muslim are uh, the religion of peace. And, and in the Quran, it talks about, he's like, no, in the Quran, it talks about the destruction of all other religions or the destruction of, of humanity or, or earth or something. And, like, and it, there's some evil stuff in there, and it's like, Okay, have you read the Bible? <laughs> exactly. And that's, I think that's the exact point I brought up is you can look at 
anything in any kind of light that you want. And that's what yeah. we're going to do on our religion episode is we're going to look at it in both light. Book because, of Revelation. Because there is familiar. so, but there's for all the all the people out there that would be like, yeah, good. They're going to they're gonna prove, they're going to show all that, all the bad stuff that the Christian people have done out there and all the bad stuff that the Islam or the Muslim people have done out there. And even all the, the bad stuff that the Scientologists have done and all this. But what about the good that they brought to it? That's where we're going to blow people's minds. Yeah. Because we're not pro-Scientology, but we're actually going to talk, maybe look into and find some... Because I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But, um, <laughs> we're going to find something um, that Scientology um, um, has done They that have Tom good. Cruise. They have Tom Cruise. That, that's there we not go. something that they've done that's good. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's a detriment to the world. Well, but, yeah. <laughs> And no I'm trying offense, here. No offense, Tom Cruise. You know, I, I liked him in well, Top Gun. Was good. No, 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 no. no. Dude, was just around. Um, oh, it was like a uh, what? Oblivion? Or yeah, a the Jack Reacher? I think it might have been the Losers. No, he wasn't in the Losers. You sure? Positive. Then, uh, not the Expendables. Was it the Expendables? No, he wasn't in that. There either. was a like a a spit. No, no, not not. Think Jack Reacher, you're thinking. No, 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 not Jack Reacher. Oh, it had uh, Jack Black in it. It was like they were filming a, a film in Vietnam, and then the film crew kind of left, but they still thought they were filming the thing because the director was with them, mm. saying that like the film crew was hidden and everything. Well, Tom Cruise is in that. I liked him in that. But anyway, have to look that we're going to approach every religion and actually, instead of just saying, oh, we're going to take this side on it, and they're bad, and look at all the bad stuff that they've done, we're going to say they've done this bad stuff, but they've actually done good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Is there any way, because there's a lot of people who believe that we need to uh, eliminate religion. And it's like, I I fear eliminating religion because I don't want people to eliminate faith and a belief in God. True. Because that is a scary path True. to go down. I, I believe that's a scary path to go down. And maybe people, especially a lot of atheists out there, who think that's the only path to go down and the right path to go down. But I think that's a wrong path to go down. Can't we just eliminate the negative and the hurtful aspects to the human race out of these religions isn't there any way that we can maybe and it's hard because it's like when you start talking about that you're like yeah, you, but that's all written in scripture and that's all that's all set in stone it's it's basically set in stone for those religions so how do they go about it? so that that religion show should be very good and it's not something to feel nervous about because we're really going to look at it in a subjective manner or a, an objective manner whichever like i need to really look into the definition of subjective and objective because one of them um, means what you want it to mean but objective is uh, you're looking at it outside looking in with no particular okay side. then we're going to look at it objectively that's exactly what i wanted to say thank you very much um but in going in with everything that we just got into uh, i think it's it's only right to move into selfishness and the apathy of the American citizen. and uh, Because we'll, we'll, they really are. And the yeah. sad thing is I don't think they realize they're being apathetic because nobody's really putting these issues in front of them for them to care about. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All they're getting is uh, what mainstream media is. I, I said recently that um, I think everybody nowadays seems to have some sense of entitlement for... I deserve because of this. I deserve because of that. Because that's what they're getting from the television shows that are filling their heads with mindless fluff. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's it's all this. It's all the distractions. Honestly, it's um, I think it's the totality of everything. Like it's not just television shows. It's radio. Like you think about how much people drive in this country. It's radio, and also people. It's not like that's the only time people listen to it. You can get it in music too. You can get it in music. It's, put it's their message sub, out there. It's subliminally, subliminally, blah, 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 whatever. In so much music and so much TV, it's in all kind of. Media Sometimes that it's we not consume. even subliminal. It's, it's just in the lyrics. If you watch, <laughs> and that's that's why I think a movie like They Live is a very important movie to see because you understand how everything around you is really pre-programmed. If you can see through it. Like, I feel like I can see through it, and it almost takes, like, the luster out of life sometimes, because it's like, I used to think that, like, I almost used to see, like, glitter, everything glittering around mm -hmm. me, and everything sparkling around me, and it's not like, oh, everything's new, but it was like, things, it's almost like all this entertainment was put up around me, yeah. but it, like, it felt yeah. like I put all this entertainment up around me, this is all the stuff I like, and then you start to realize it's like, not just in your house, I'm talking about all around you, and it's like, this is the world we love living in, it's like when you're outside in it, and it's yep. like you come to a realization where, especially when you see a movie like They Live, it's like seeing a billboard talking about like the newest liquor, and once you really start to, like, I don't say consider yourself intelligent, but you really start to like understand how a lot of things work and what, what's wrong with society and, and, and the world today, and you see a, a billboard advertising a nice big bottle of Crown Royal, and you're like, 
You know how many people are saying that? Like, one, that there's alcoholics out there are saying that, like, I need to go get me a bottle of Crown Royal. Yeah. But, like, how many people are saying that and, like, thinking, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have a party this weekend. Maybe I will get a bottle of Crown Royal or maybe I'll get a bottle of something else. You know what I'm saying? Or I haven't but it's had like that in a the, while. The advertisement a of yeah. a poison. So, yeah. like, if this was They Live, you – and that's kind of how I see things sometimes is you look up to that, that – I look up to that billboard and I don't see a bottle of Crown Royal. I see – a nondescript plain bottle, maybe shaped like the Crown Royal bottle, but I see skull and crossbones on it, and it says poison right underneath that skull and crossbones. Yeah. And they're advertising that, and, it, and there's like people and there's chicks like, ooh, like desiring yeah. it and stuff. And it's like, I see the chicks desiring a bottle of poison. Yeah. And I'm like, that's where we're at. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, we've gotten to the point where everybody accepts those things. I was talking about it at work the other day. It's like, it's so funny that people have an, an instinctual knowledge that the pharmaceutical industry is somewhat corrupt and that it's really just about money. You tell, you can tell 90% of people out there that it's, it's, well, tell everybody out there that the pharmaceutical industry is just about money. 90% of them will agree with you in one way, shape, or form. How you know that the pharmaceutical industry is inherently all about money. But then all of a sudden you get some like life-threatening disease. Or life and you go straight thing, to them. And you go straight to the doctor and you Give me instinctually, anything. but you instinctually know that that doctor is like kind of working for the, yeah. the pharmaceutical industry. He may act like he cares about you or whatever, but you instinctively know that that doctor is working for the pharmaceutical industry. You're trying to make the pharmaceutical industry money and make himself more money, make you a recurring customer until you die. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You instinctively know that, but you go there and you listen to what he's got to say no matter what. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, for me, it really, it, it changed my life when the, and, and it's like, when you think of something like that, you think like, oh my God, all doctors are only about making money. And it's like, not well, all, but well, let, I'll just, I'll tell you this. And it's, it's kind of personal. Just I like not I don't like sharing all. anything really personal on the show, but this is, it's, it's so impactful. It's not even funny, especially with what we're talking about. Uh, when my mom got, <laughs> my mom got diagnosed with, uh, Stage four melanoma, stage four skin cancer. I was told she only had like three or four months to live, right? Um, they had surgery on her to remove the cancer. It was in the bottom of her foot. They had surgery on her to remove the cancer. They took the cancer out. She had to keep going back to the Helen Graham Cancer Center, right? At the Helen Graham, and I personally thought about going to the Helen Graham Cancer Center with signs protesting saying there are cures for cancer and the cures for cancer and saying, Google these, like, check them out. If you got cancer, look up these cures, like, yeah. come on, people. But I, would, I was sure that they would have me removed or arrested or something for doing um, that to protect their As long as you're thing. not on their property. But you have to be the whole thing property. I didn't want to get involved in because there's also people who would get angry at me doing that. Yeah, that would offend some people. Like, cancer, really... it's, it's such a, a How could you thing, say right? these things? But when she would go there, like, every two or three weeks for her follow-up appointments, right? And I remember right after she had her surgery, she went in and... That was really weird. What? Somebody at the door? <laughs> Almost sounds like you were probably not. Um, okay. When she went in for her surgery... She, when she came out of her surgery, she went back to that, uh, to the doctors, right? And the doctor basically sat me, my sister, and her down and talked to us about what her options were going forward. Because when you have skin cancer, even if you have the original source of skin cancer removed, especially the longer it's been there, there's a very good chance that it's, it has spread throughout your body or has spread a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So they got the majority of the cancer out, but they weren't sure if it was going to continue to spread or if it had already started to spread and they just weren't detecting it yet, right? So they said, you're going to have to go on uh, interferon treatment, which is for skin cancer, that's what you go on. It's like the chemotherapy for okay. skin cancer, but it's just as bad. And it, can, it, and it kills people just as much as chemotherapy does. It makes you feel just as bad. You're bedridden, really. It's kind of worse than chemotherapy. You're bedridden while you're, like, while you're having those treatments, and it destroys your health. Like While you're having the treatments, it destroys your health and can kill you. And basically, I told the doctor, like when he told us those were the options and that he recommended that her get interferon, I was terrified that... My mom is just a normal person, you know what I'm saying? My mom's, and, and I love her to death, and like, I, I, that's what makes me like, have compassion and apathy for the average American who doesn't care, is because that's kind of how my mom is, and I love her to death, and you know what? Like, some people just want to have a simple, normal life and don't want to have to put the world on their shoulders. 
You know what I'm saying? Just want to live their life. Yeah. And just want to enjoy their TV shows and this and that and just want to maybe their video games and that's just what they want. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I came to accept that. But what worried me was since my mom wasn't the I think about stuff so much or, or I, I, I look into everything. You know what I'm saying? Like she if, – if society says you trust your doctor and you trust what your doctor says, you're going to do what your doctor says. So I was so worried when he said that that she was going to say, okay, then that's what I have to do. You know, I know it's going to make me feel like crap, but if that's my only chance or that's what you're recommending that I should do to make sure that the cancer doesn't spread or that I don't get more cancer or it doesn't kill me, then that's what I'll do. So when he said that, she didn't, like, immediately say, okay, well, that's what I have to do. But I spoke up and said, I've looked into so many other things, and I believe, and I've looked into, like, look for cancer cures myself. And I know that sounds stupid because saying this to a doctor, but I've looked for cancer cures myself, right? And I found basically that instead of going on interferon, if she lives a much healthier lifestyle and lives a, a nutrient-rich and vitamin-rich lifestyle and she, she cuts out anything bad, uh, it cuts out dairy and ice cream from her diet and stops drinking any kind of beer and like she goes completely healthy, like cuts down on meats and, and chicken and all that stuff, she goes completely healthy. I really believe that she won't need the interferon. I don't think she'll be okay. You know what that doctor told me? And this changed my outlook. Because at that point, I was like, these fucking doctors are going to kill my mom. We yeah. did, they, they got the cancer out of her, and now they're saying you got to go on an interferon. Keep in mind, a year and a half prior to that, I had been dating a girl whose best friend had died of skin cancer. Not because of the skin cancer, because she was on interferon treatments. And interferon treatments. And when she was on interferon treatments, she was like loopy completely out of it like the chick couldn't talk to her best friend because she was on the interferon treatments and then she died because of the interferon treatments so i'm thinking to myself like these people are recommending oh you gotta be kidding me is our video off already that was quick it is Dude, that blows all right well we're going audio again I'll audio it, it is i'll get it up for episode eight um what do you call it? I was basically up to that point. I had believed that all doctors like were just working for the system and just trying to make money and put more money in their pocket and feed the pharmaceutical system, and they were all brainwashed to just spew the pharmaceutical, the 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 the, the mainstream uh, treatment for cancer. They were all just like brainwashed to do that, and and poor people who couldn't think for themselves because the doctor's not going to say, well, maybe I'm wrong or maybe that's not the thing you should do right now, right? So that's the way I looked at it, right? Well, when I said all that to the doctor about nutrition and everything like that, he looked at my mom and said, I can't tell you, I'm literally, I'm, I'm not allowed to tell you or I can't tell you that, that I don't recommend interferon and that you shouldn't go on interferon. But from what your son just said, you, if you want to, I'll have no problem with you not doing it. Like he basically said, I'm not allowed to say yeah. that's the right way to go, but you have every right to decide for yourself if that's the right way to go. And your son sounds like he's he's on the right track. You don't. If, he basically said he you says were I right, have to but, recommend yeah. interferon. Yeah, but he sounds like he's on the right track. It's your decision. That's what he said. And it was like, oh my god, like I can't recommend what your son said. I have to recommend interferon. But it's up to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and he's not wrong. He's not, like, on the wrong track. And, like, that changed my whole entire perspective. Like, oh, my God. This guy put his doctor stuff to the side for a second and said, this is a mother in here with her two children who, like, love their mother to death and, like, are here for her cancer her cancer follow-up meetings and, and want to be by her side because they love her mother, love their mother, and think that their mother may die within the next couple months, and they want to spend every moment with her and be there for her right by her side, right? He put all his doctor stuff to the side and said, you know what, I want to give this lady an opportunity to live. I want her kids to have an opportunity to still have their mother. They Obviously, he cares enough where he's looked into it that much, then they should be given the opportunity. And that changed my whole outlook on the the that there are actually are good doctors out there that there are actually good police officers out there because if anybody knows me and knows what happened to 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 what do you call it, my dad and with police officers it's like you, I would have every right to think all police officers are scum and like there's no such thing as a good police officer out there but there are 
There definitely are good police officers out there. See, I wouldn't be able teams. to think like that because I know my grandfather. There's just a not many. Officer. But see, the thing is, there's not many. It's yeah, exactly. The thing. There's not many, but they do. But they're exist. out there. When you think about that, there's 300 million people in this country. Even if there's not many, there could still be a million good police officers out there. There could still still be a million good doctors out there. I you don't think the there's fra- a million good the doctors old, out there. What's the old phrase? One in a million. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's only one in a million, that's better than zero. It really is, and, and it, but it, it gives value to those types of people. Honestly, it really does. Um, so I wanted to like go from that. I definitely wanted to talk about um, this chick, DM Brown. People, uh, I don't know if you've heard about this chick, DM Brown. I had never heard of her before in Not my life. Not by name. But apparently she was on, and this goes into the whole reality TV thing, and people, that's what they love to watch and this and that. Um, they love to be distracted is Real World Road Rules Challenge. This chick was on Real oh, World no. Road Rules Challenge I remember that. a few years ago, right? I don't know. Maybe it was a few years ago. Maybe it was a year ago. I don't know. I don't even know when that show went off the air. I stopped watching it maybe eight years ago was the last time I actually watched an episode of Real World Road Rules Challenge. Because I used to watch Road Rules when I was a kid and like in the 90s and loved the show. thought it was so cool driving around in RVs, going to different like, That would be fun, stuff. wouldn't it? You get yeah, to see the like, country, good, you see the that's sights. That's a good premise that's pretty or a cool. good idea for a show. And I have that idea for a podcast show. Which I wouldn't say, but like, what do we got? And especially this being the audio episode, we're probably yeah. going to get fifteen or twenty total views <laughs> on it on on YouTube. So, but I got that idea for like a podcast, basically driving around in an RV and driving to your guests and to certain mm. locations to interview people and stuff. Like that would be pretty cool. And even setting up the studio outside at certain like special locations where the background would be so cool. It would be different. But um, what do you call it? the check? DM Brown. Uh, she tweeted out a tweet. Three days she has cancer, has been battling cancer, and doctors have been trying to treat her. And uh, basically, uh, she three days before her death, she tre- tweeted this out right here. I need prayers and advice. My doctors are seemingly giving up, but I won't and can't roll over. Whatever option I have to live, I'm grabbing. That's exactly her tweet three days before her before she died. It hurts me so much inside to see people having to go through that. To see people having to think that the, like, the doctor said there's nothing else that they can do, like, then I'm, I'm reserved to death. But when you see somebody like, whatever option I have to live, I'm grabbing. And it's like, that's the inherent problem with the whole cancer situation in this country. Because usually that, the easiest option, well, or the quickest you, option, is the doctor. Once it's very, you don't it's, have to really research. Exactly, it's too easy to start treating yourself or start letting the doctor treat you with cancer and trust that he knows what he's doing and trust that he's going to use every option or everything at his disposal to try and cure you of your cancer, try and get rid of the cancer in you, right? And the problem is, once you do that. You give up all faith that there's anything else out there that might work because the doctors know everything and are going to try everything that's humanly possible to help and you. And let's live. say they put you on something that has an adverse effect. Then what? what's the first thing you do? You go back to the doctor. This didn't work. Well, okay, let me give you this instead. I'm, I'm talking about, yeah, yeah, that, that is true. But I'm talking about it also gets to the point where you're like her. You're in the hospital and you're days away from death and the doctors say it's like only getting worse and the doctors say there's nothing else we can do i'm sorry like we like we have to stop treatment because there's nothing else we can do the cancer is going to win and it's like these people let cancer beat them and it's not that they're letting cancer beat them like oh well, there's something i can do about this i should just be stronger this or that it's that they believe that the doctors did everything that they could do and it's the fact that the doctors don't speak up and say, there's not even somebody slipping in in the, in the middle of the night like, yeah, look, listen up. There's this guy named Rick Simpson. You got to like literally look him up in the next day or literally the next 24 hours. You need to look him up and contact him and figure out how you can get out to him and get some cannabis oil and start trying to heal yourself. You know what I'm saying? Or when people yeah. come in and they're first diagnosed with cancer, how come the doctor's not like, you need to go on a strictly vegetarian diet right now. You need to, you need to like... Make sure you're getting your vitamins, your nutrients. You need to cut out any soda from your diet, any alcohol from your diet. Like, the doctor doesn't tell you all that stuff. He says, okay, I'm going to write your prescription for a couple medications, and you'll be good to go. And make sure you don't drink directly after taking uh, this medication or something. And it's like they don't actually point them in the direction towards curing themselves and helping them. They point them in the direction towards their own prescription pad and refilling prescriptions for people until they die, until they can say, well, there's nothing else we can do. 
I have a family member who was diagnosed with kidney cancer, and they had to remove the kidney, and he's been doing the chemo and all that. And I, I've explained some of what you just mentioned, and he's, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking yeah, about. The doctor the said I have to do this, and it's like... Dude, <laughs> in the past five years since I've really grasped, I was probably only four years ago with my mom, but in the past five years, and the sad part is if you start looking into cancer cures, and when my mom first got cancer, I started looking into these cancer cures, and I was... I was going almost probably, I was probably doing literally eight hours of research a day online looking for cancer cures. And I came across something called Miracle Mineral Solution, MMS. Now, there's so much information about mineral, Miracle Mineral Solution online. And it's a citrus solution that you buy from these people. There's, so, there's a bunch of different people that sell it, but it's supposed to be a big secret and this and that. There's so much mis information online about miracle mineral solution you can even find people who have cancer and are treating themselves with miracle mineral solution and sometimes it works placebo effect and sometimes it doesn't and they're like it's not doing anything for me my cancer is actually getting worse like i'm actually like i feel like i'm dying you know what i'm saying like i stopped my treatments to do this and now i feel like i'm dying like this yeah. doesn't work it turns out, like, I really think that's the whole miracle mineral solution thing has been placed there by the pharmaceutical industry because as soon as you start looking for cancer cures, I think, I don't know how it works unless you really know where to look. If you just type into Google, cancer cures are possible cancer cures, miracle mineral solution comes up within it. And you start looking into Miracle Mineral Solution and you're like, okay, well, let me buy a little bottle of this. You drop a couple drops into, into some water and drink that. And like it's four or five times a day, you got to drink a glass of water with the Miracle Mineral Solution in it. Or it's actually like, no, like 20 or 30 drops. So it's like set up so they whoever's selling it can make a lot of money. Okay. But it, I can't realize, realize that that's complete BS. When I actually found all the real cancer cures and the the the... The nutritional eating or the, the healthy lifestyle, healthy living, not eating things, not eating things that poison your body, you know what I'm saying? Trying to live a healthy lifestyle or even going with cannabis oil or even the guy, um, what's his name? The Brzezinski Clinic in Texas. He's, uh, he's been successfully treated. He's successfully cured cancer uh, a few times. He's been sued by the American government a few times, so that should definitely tell you what's going on there. Yeah. Um, but... Once I actually found all the real cancer cures, MMS was nowhere to be found. MMS wasn't yeah, even mentioned. Yeah, don't say. Because it's all such BS. And it was so sad. I thought back to the people like that were making videos like, I'm treating myself with, with MMS and, and nothing's working. And it's like, they got wrapped in. They got roped in. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's a scam. It's like you're, you're trapped in a prison, right? You're trapped in a, a, a POW camp. And all of a sudden, you get out, and you break the, through the fences, and you're running through the woods, and you're like, yes, yes, I got out of here. Oh, my God, I'm so happy. Oh, yes. And then all of a sudden, they, you hit another fence, and you're like, oh, what's this? And you look over, and there's some guy barbecuing, and he's like, hey, welcome out, bud. And you're like, oh, I'm so happy I'm out of the prison. But you don't even realize, you're still in the prison. Yeah. That's a guard, just not in uniform, cooking his burger. And he knows you're a prisoner, and he knows you still have no way to get out of this actual fence right here. You're not out of the prison yet. It's like... Yeah, yeah, it's enough to talk. I see things. exactly what you're saying. No, yeah, it really is. So, um, if you can, Brian, we'll get into uh, where we're going to touch on real quick. In we're going to touch on, on in episode eight on Wednesday. We're going to touch on a uh, what do you call it? a homelessness and the, the average American apathy towards homelessness and why we don't do anything. But uh, for this show, I think we should definitely uh, I think wrap it up. Right? Uh, what time did we start this show? I don't. I think we started at like twelve forty-five, didn't we? I don't even. Around know. there. All right, we're gonna wrap up this show that, so that we can uh, what do you call it? move on to bigger and better things for today. So, um, if you can, Brian, can you give me your top ten? Um, quick as I can. It's kind what of is hard. It called? To, What's the name? Top ten conspiracies that turned out to be true. All right, cool. Yeah, go ahead as quick as you Which can. Which kind of interesting. Don't linger America. on anyone too long, and I think we'll be good. Uh, okay, starting at number ten, the Dreyfus affair. Sound familiar at all? Um, you familiar with that one? It sounds like Julio Louis Dreyfus. Negative. Uh, it's the late 1800s in France. He was an artillery officer. Alfred Dreyfus was wrongfully convicted of treason and uh, sentenced to life imprisonment, and it was all based on falsified government documents. And he was later pardoned by the government after they tried to bury it, but it was made public by a writer named Emile Zola. And at that point, the government had to admit, yeah, this was false, and they pardoned him from prison. 
Okay. Number nine, a program called MK Ultra from the 1950s through 70s. It's a CIA mind control program. And I know a lot of people are sitting at home right now saying, yeah, mind control, CIA, I'm right. No, this is admitted. There's documents that have been leaked. There's a yeah. lot out there on MK Ultra. Um, main thing they used was LSD, massive amounts of LSD to control what people. Is the, what's the, the, the term for somebody who's controlled by something like uh, Manchurian Candidate? Yes, Manchurian Candidate. That's tied into MLK. And uh, that was exposed actually by the Rockefeller Commission. MLK Ultra, that's great. MK Ultra. Nice. MK Ultra. The Rockefeller Commission exposed that. Nice. Uh, eight is Operation Mockingbird. Which um, we briefly mentioned earlier, I told you I would say why you shouldn't trust the mainstream media. Back in the 50s through the 70s, the CIA was paying journalists, both domestic and foreign, to publish CIA propaganda for any agenda that they wanted to push at the time. And they actually funded at least one Hollywood movie, which was a uh, version of George Orwell's Animal Farm. And that was later exposed in 1975 at the church committee hearings. Yeah. And just on that, for two seconds, if you look online, I believe you can find two clips. There's one of George Bush, and I know there's definitely a David Rockefeller quote that you can find of uh, that he talks about the, the media helping him. And thank you for the media uh, supporting our effort to kind of sway the news in our direction. But also George Bush in a press conference in 2007, I believe, admitted, or 2006, admitted, uh, a reporter asked him that the, about a, a story that the CIA had obviously planted or a fake news story that had obviously been planted, and George Bush admitted very easily and very freely or, or casually that uh, the government, U.S. government has done that for years and, and nobody seemed to have a problem with it, so what's the big deal? So, Yeah, that was uh, Operation Mockingbird. You can look that up. Yep. Uh, number seven, I got the Tuskegee experiments. Uh, some people are familiar with the movie, The Tuskegee Airmen, but no, this is um, this goes a little beyond that. The, this was actually the U.S. Public Health Service injected over 400 African American men with syphilis between 1932 and 1972. Now, it was supposed to be a six-month experiment and ended up running over 50 years. Now, I've heard that's tied into eugenics and uh, Rockefellers. Well, um, well, what I got is they were given false treatments, and the real treatments were intentionally misheld so the agency could actually study and learn more about syphilis and its effect on the human body. Wow. And these men had no idea that they were being injected with this in many cases. Wow. No, that's insane. Well, it's also like, didn't they do that with sterilization sometimes, too? They didn't let people oh, yes. know that they were being sterilized. It was more just treated like a doctor's appointment. They didn't yes. realize Oh, you need your sterilized. vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> so, they didn't tell you it was a vaccine, so, so you couldn't have kids. <laughs> like, really? Like, how do we just, like, allow this to happen? And, and there's, it's apathy, man. It really is. Good. Uh, number six, we move on to the mid-80s, uh, 1985 and 86, the Iran-Contra scandal, where the White House authorized the secret trade of weapons to Iran in exchange for U.S. hostages that were being held. And this was actually uncovered by Congress two years later. Yep. And that's pretty, if you don't believe that we fu uh, arm our enemies, there you go. Just look up Iran-Contra scandal. And look up Oliver North and a book, yes. a book by Gary Webb called Dark Shadows, I believe. Yeah, it is Dark Shadows by Gary Webb. That's, it's... The whole thing is just mind-boggling when you really mind-bottling when you really think of it. It really is. Yeah. Here's one some people we mentioned Tom Cruise earlier. Some people might be familiar with this one. July twentieth, nineteen ninety-four, conspiracy to assassinate Adolf Hitler, where Colonel Henning von Tresco uh, recruited Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg, played in the movie Valkyrie by Tom Cruise. Uh, they had a plot to use Germany's or Hitler's continuity of government program their plan for continuity of government in the event of like an assassination or a disaster mm -hmm. they wanted to basically assassinate Hitler but they knew that all his followers would still continue the Nazi Aryan race plan mm -hmm. so they rewrote Project Valkyrie to exclude the SS had a plan to assassinate Hitler uh, it was a briefcase bomb. He ended up only sustaining minor injuries. He didn't die. But for a while, everyone thought he was dead. And they convinced the 
most of Germany in the military that the SS was attempting to overthrow the government wow. and they were going to use that to install the new regime and do away with the Nazi regime. But uh, unfortunately, Hitler survived the attempt and they were all executed by firing squad. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, number four, the 1919 World Series. Yes, that's a conspiracy Black that Sox. turned out to be true. The Black Sox. Eight players from the Chicago White Sox threw the series against the Cincinnati Reds because some people had some money bet on the wrong team, and uh, that actually made front-page news nationally at the time. Well, uh, we got to do a sports show. We definitely do got to do a sports show. And like how I talked about earlier, how we go into things a little bit different. Well, coincidentally, the charges were dropped, but oh. all eight players were banned from the league. But it was... It was it was discovered. It's not like it was conjecture and maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. It was discovered as actually happened. Yes. But I think we should get into one day on, a, on do a sports show and touch on the all of the conspiracies that have popped up in the New sports. England Patriots uh, videotaping. New England Patriots videotaping. Uh, what do you call it? The the referee in the NBA rigging games. Uh, yeah, Pete Rose. There's a lot like, of them. Yeah, there's a lot of them. There there really is a lot of them, and they get swept under the rug pretty quickly. So uh, and, and all for the sake of the image of the games. Good. This one I had to throw on the list. I, I I like to believe that people know this, but then again, there's people that have no idea. Oh. So number three is Operation Northwoods. Okay. Back in the 1960s, we were uh, our government wanted to invade Cuba. They wanted to overthrow the Cuban government, and well, the public wasn't really big on that. So they came up with a top secret plan that included false flag terrorism on U.S. soil, in U.S. cities, killing of innocent Americans, uh, blowing up U.S. Navy ships, sinking uh, Cuban refugee boats, hijacking planes. Uh. And this pl the whole idea was to blame it all on Cuba so the public would get behind a war with Cuba. Yep. And the Joint Chiefs of Staff actually approved this plan didn't but it was the civilian leadership that rejected it. I thought it was Kennedy that rejected it. it the Kennedy, uh, Kennedy, no, Kennedy wasn't even involved. He found no, out he by, found out by the civilian yeah. leadership. He wow, didn't know yeah, about the plan. Yeah. But it was still kept secret for 40 years before being declassified under the Freedom of Information Act. Wow. Uh, number two, the Reichstag fire in 1933. Mm. February 27th, 1933... The uh, Reichstag building, which is basically like the German Parliament building at the time for the Nazis, just uh, struck by arson. Somebody set it on fire, and and it had to be it had to be the communists that are going to overthrow the German government. No, Hitler ordered his own men to light fire to the Reichstag building to bo it, use it as quote unquote evidence as a communist plot against the German government, and that's actually seen as the pivotal moment for the Nazi police state regime that everyone knew and loved so well. Uh, what was, do you think of, uh, what do you call Oklahoma City bombing? Uh, from the Oklahoma City bombing moving forward till 9-11, and then it went mm. into overdrive on 9-11, but from the Oklahoma City bombing till 9-11, the police state rose and grew to a massive stage like a, a massive stage compared to where it had been. And I'm not talking about the actual police force, the numbers of officers, but I'm talking about the militarization the of the police. Oppression and of freedoms. The, exactly. The, the, instead of being protectors of the peace and, and, and there to protect and serve, the police started to get much more of a mindset of we're here to be the military of the streets to make sure that no bombs come in and nobody's attacking us. And a, instead of... I'm here to protect and serve the, the the greater peace or the greater good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've, I've definitely noticed it. it amped up big time after 9-11. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could see it getting worse beforehand. Yeah. And Slowly, a lot of incrementally. People, see, a lot of people um, um, correlate the, the or, or compare the two, the Reichstag fire to 9-11. And that they could be very similar in, yes. in circumstances behind them. And that could be very true, but I, I think... As far as when you're actually 9/11, I think it, when compared to Reichstag fire 9/11, on a, when you compare the scale of the two, 9/11 was maybe a thousand times the scale of the Reichstag fire. Yes. Whereas but you also have to Oklahoma look at the City bombing, um, Oklahoma City bombing was a much closer in in scale 
to what the Reichstag fire probably was. I think yeah. what it was, you're also looking at the times we live in and things like that. But also the Oklahoma City bombing, if anybody actually looks into the all of the the all the stuff that surrounds like I always thought Oklahoma City bombing went off exactly how we were told on the news and the 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 status quo or the status quo fucking the viewpoint on on Oklahoma City bombing I always believed Timothy McVeigh you know what I'm saying the truck bomb all that by himself like, hey, exactly <laughs> well you really start to look into it and watch a few documentaries onto it and, and read a few of the other perspectives and just people trying to tell the truth and people that were there that, that day. day and the people that were there that day the um how about the everything ATF, that surrounded the it, ATF was based in that building. You, you they were just as many all questions. told to take you off, and they just were as many questions right up the street for a drill. And <laughs> after that happened, things began to really start ramping up. They didn't ramp up to the point where they did at nine eleven or after nine eleven, but things began to start ramping up after. The, so there definitely is. It's not like you can, you can say, oh well, scale wise they're around the same, but Oklahoma City bombing really was nothing like Reichstag fire because there's no chance or possibility that that was a false flag. Which Oklahoma City bombing, if you really start to look at it and look at everything, you're like, wow, there's some really fishy stuff going on here. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying if it wasn't a false flag, somebody was doing something other than what we were told. You know, there's a, there's a lot more to this story than what we were told. Same as with 9/11. If it wasn't a false flag, well, there's a lot of stuff that we weren't told. So we have every right to think that there's something fishy going on of here course. because there's a lot of stuff we weren't told. But a lot of people talking behind a lot of doors, people just listen. A lot to of Fox stuff News redacted. Says, you know, yep. Dude, a lot of people just believe the official story unquestionably. Yep, yep you're right. Well, I apologize Which, for interrupting No, you. I'm actually glad you went off on that tangent because it kind of ties in with our number one conspiracy that turned out to be true. Mm-hmm. The Big Brother domestic spying state that we live in. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for the longest time, that was, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. You Put read on your tinfoil too hats, many, folks. Tinfoil hats. You read too many Orwell novels. Yep. Well, man, a, a man named Edward Snowden, who's been in the news the past few years... He uh, brought out a lot of data showing the National Security Administration has been illegally eavesdropping on U.S. citizens for years, collecting huge amounts of cell phone metadata. I think that one speaks for itself. And this is to protect us from terrorism, they say, of course. I think that one speaks for itself. Oh, no, let's let's look into this just a little bit. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, There is no evidence whatsoever that the NSA has ever protected us from any terrorist attack whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And uh, some leaked info about their project known as PRISM shows that the scope of their eavesdropping is far, far greater than even many conspiracy theorists could have imagined. Here's a question for you. I I really, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but this, I always, always, always have this thought when I think of the, the scope of the NSA thing. Like, before it came out, like, especially years ago, I thought it was like, yeah, exactly, tinfoil hat type of stuff. It's like, really, like... That's going a little bit far. That's yeah. that's like that would I think would be exposed by now. Yeah, that's how I always looked at it. And then oh, it's been exposed as, as I well, no, I'm saying years ago. That's how I yeah, looked at it. Yeah. And then uh, maybe two, three years ago, I came to the conclusion that you know what, that's probably true. Especially when you looked at the terms of service of a lot of apps and stuff that you yep. get on your cell phone, even the terms of service that comes with your cell phone itself, right? Why start, does the Facebook Messenger need to access my camera and microphone? Well, Connect. It's also like <laughs> Xbox Connect. Xbox Connect came out and and has freely been able to record your your personal conversations in your house if it wants to. It's not saying that it, it's doing it all the time, but it has the ability to Actually, do it, and it's, it's allowed to do it. I'll throw this out there on Xbox Connect. The uh, sensor in it for the motion sensor? Well, the new one. The well, new one. Xbox well, One. Okay. Well, that's I know what you're talking about. The one that's the, always on? Is that what you're talking about? No, no, not that. I'm talking about one? the Connect that came mm-hmm. out of, like two years ago. Mm-hmm. It actually had the ability, the Xbox One's probably worse, but it had the ability to do a 360 degree um, computer image scan oh, yeah, yeah. of like 150 square feet around it. Yeah. So it yeah. could literally map your house where you were in your yep. house yep. and and like a computer image of what yep. you were doing. Yep. Um, do you ever think, because like a lot of times, like when I always used to think about that, and especially once I realized that it's probably true, right, is, okay, well, if the NSA is like spying on all of us, right, and there's so many people out there either selling drugs, you know what I'm saying, doing illegal things, murdering people, you know what I'm saying, there's so many crimes and so much bad stuff that goes on out there. How come they're not doing anything to stop it? How come they're not even trying to stop it? Are they just collecting the data on that stuff and not really caring? Then I started to think about, like, well, okay, because i got a mind that likes to jump way outside of the box sometimes. Um, 
what if the NSA, because the NSA has actually released a document online talking about its communication with an alien entity or an alien uh, species, al- alien race. I've heard um, of this, yes. Which is, it's, it's kind of weird to think of. And if you look it up, it's like you, you still look at it and it's almost unbelievable. And you don't, you, you stop looking at it. Or once you're done looking at it, five minutes later, you're not sitting there thinking to yourself like, oh my God, we've contacted aliens. You're like, yeah. you still don't really understand exactly what they were trying to say there. Other than they're trying to say they were contacted by aliens or have been in contact with aliens. But when you start to think of that and you think of all of the UFO sightings and things that have gone on out there, when you think of the men in black, okay, when you think of people talking about men in black who have showed up, men in either sunglasses or men in, in black suits, dark SUVs, tinted out SUVs, this and that, who have shown up and either taken UFO evidence or have interviewed people about a certain experience or, or witnessed something and they interview these people and tell them that they're not to speak to anybody about it. Like, sometimes I almost think that that whole network is not set up to spy on us and... and But to keep us quiet? To keep us quiet on the UFO thing because they're in contact with the UFOs. It's almost like a deal that's been struck and that was probably struck a very long time ago. Not, Not hundreds of years ago, but maybe 50 or 60 or 70 years ago. A deal that was struck that they we would have an agency in place to make sure that there's no massive exposure going out to the American Kind of like the movie Men in Black. Kind of, yes, but it's it's more of... It's more of, like, I think, honestly, a lot of people that work for NSA don't even know that that's the reason that they're recording all Yeah, I account. believe that as well. You know what I'm saying? But there's certain, like, that flags that, that are thrown up. That, you figure it's a government... It's, the computer it's an alphabet for, agency, you know? and every single one of those alphabet agencies is so compartmentalized that you're sitting right across from me, and we're working on well, two different things way. and have look no idea. Look at it this way. Like, if you, if you watch any kind of ancient aliens or UFO shows or even do research on UFOs online and watch the, the millions of different things on UFOs out there, you'll every now and then come across somebody or something saying that there are actually aliens like aliens that resemble human beings that yep. are either cloaked in a human being type of thing or actually a human being body but with still the full mind of the alien and thinking like an alien and having an alien agenda right but there's aliens like that in positions of power in our government and businesses all around our country right now if you think of that and you think about them being in control and being in power and not wanting them, not wanting to be exposed whatsoever, especially if they have a mission and an agenda to turn the whole world upside down and like literally destroy us from the inside out. Let us destroy ourselves and almost accept it because we, we've got all these distractions and all this technology and yada yeah. yada, you know what I'm saying? But they don't want to expose themselves. Like if this is true, we could end up dead within the next week. So maybe it's, it's kind of – it's not the best thing. But then again, we're, we're audio only. We know how audio only goes, yada yada, right? But – if that were true, okay, if that were true, then they may want to have some sort of a system in place that monitors all of the people. With all this technology they've given us, there's a way to monitor through, monitor us through all of that technology. And they may have that, that system set up to make sure that there's not – make sure that nobody's exposing it even though that's part of it. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who's like really excited about a UFO that they saw and they're trying to tell everybody, well, and and there's multiple people who've seen it but nobody else wants to talk about it. But they're, they've got a video or some something stupid like that. Well, NSA or Men in Black or whatever show up, tell them they need to keep their mouth shut. And that keeps it from really exploding into any kind of big story. But it's also in place to make sure that there's no group of people like me or you who – who have come up with this idea and then actually because there's so many people out there to do this they come up with this idea that that's actually true you know what i'm saying like i think david ike did that with uh with lizard people you know he came up with the idea that lizard people run everything it kind of ties into this a little bit but that he came up with the idea that lizard people are real and went with it and he's got a following of people that believe that lizard people are real right well i think the reason that that whole system is in place, the whole spying apparatus, especially in this country, is in place is, and I think it's a, it's across the whole entire planet, not just this country. I think this country, it's been exposed, and it's because it's, it's a massive oh, network. It's, it's obvious in Britain. They don't even hide it. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Every street lamp has right. eight cameras on it. I mean. But um, what do you call it? It's in place to make sure that there's no group of people that forms and secretly forms. It's not like they're broadcasting videos on YouTube and this and that, but they're secretly formed. One of them's got to have a cell phone in their pocket. One of them's got to have a connect hooked up to their Xbox or some uh, webcam on their laptop or something like that. 
somebody's going to have some way that they can keep an eye on that group. And if that group says, we know what's going on. We know that these alien dudes are in power. What if, what's his name? Eric Frayne, right? If you're looking at that whole Eric Frayne thing, there's an article online somewhere saying that Eric Frayne was like basically a anti-government guy who thought that a revolution is the only way that the, the country is going to get back on track or that's the only way things and, and the government is, is misusing it or abusing its power and blah, blah, blah. What if he was actually one of the, somebody who actually believed something like that? And when he attacked those troopers, he thought one of those troopers was actually an alien or actually had, like, been following or tailing that trooper and then discovered that that trooper was actually an alien or had contact with aliens or something. And he really, he believed the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe he was following the trooper and something the trooper did made him believe, oh, that trooper's definitely an alien. And he killed the dude thinking, like, we, we've got to start stopping these people. I, I yeah. don't care if it comes to me dying, like... We've got to start killing these aliens one way or another. If I got to be a martyr to make it happen, you know what I'm saying? Like, they want to. I think that whole system's in place to make sure that there's no group of people popping up that have that mission to stop their goal. You know what I'm saying? We can I pop can up that. all we want and choose different issues that we want to work on, but nothing's really going to get done on it because they're in control. All right, so I'm, I apologize. Well, I completely. No, it's good. Like, um, I only got a few more quick things on that. It's a. Uh June of this year, 2014, the Washington Post reported that almost 90% of the data that's being collected is actually from internet users who show no links whatsoever to terrorist organizations or terror activities. Wow. And uh, the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, if you prefer. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite organizations, by the way. <laughs> well, it states there's a clear violation of the Constitution. They are currently pursuing a lawsuit against the NSA over it, mm -hmm. claiming violations of the Fourth Amendment right to privacy and the First Amendment rights to free speech and association. Wow. Don't you love when you watch cops and you see the person like... ACLU! ACLU! Like the cops trying <laughs> yeah, to arrest them. Like, ACLU! I'm calling the ACLU on you! Now, how many people are sitting yeah. home watching cops that are like, what is ACLU? Yeah, there's probably... Uh, it's the American yeah. Civil Liberties Union. Yep. It's not well known. No, they're... It's known, but it's not very well known. Like, uh, the average person... Uh, let's just put this... Well, that lawsuit is still pending. The average that. person that watches Game of Thrones every Sunday or whatever day it comes on... And probably a good 98% of those people don't exactly know what the ACLU is. No, they so probably sorry, never heard of sorry, it. Sorry, let's say 80%, because I'm sure there's a lot of intelligent people who actually watch Game of Thrones and are just aren't in the politics or whatever it is, but they still have their favorite show and are an intelligent person. So let's just say 80% of the people who watch every, the show... I make it a point to watch ACLU. Arrow every week, yeah, but well, that doesn't mean that, you know, I want to live the lifestyle of a vigilante. I, I, like to, like, I, well, I think I like to, to not put people down, but I like to, like... I like to think that, oh, well, all these shows, they're all trash, and, you know, people shouldn't distract themselves with this. I, I got my own shows. I got Workaholics. I got uh, The League sometimes I watch. You know what I'm saying? I got certain shows. I got Star Trek. I watch Star Trek Next Generation, like, on the regular. Kitchen Nightmares, See, I, 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 I can't The anymore. Prophet, I love. I, I have, love that. That's I have a reality like, TV show, but I love it. I have every episode of Next Generation practically memorized. I could say the same for DS9 at this point, so it's... The shows I used to I love like, watching, I just don't need to watch anymore. I, I watch room. Arrow, I watch Full Call. I, I, I think, to me, I think when you're watching a show, and that's why, that's why I'm kind of a hypocrite. And that's and why I'm I don't watch much it, TV. When I watch a show like Workaholics or The League, I'm watching basically the same kind of show that everybody else would watch. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people who watch Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, all that, and watch Workaholics in The League, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But... To me, I find those shows like pretty funny. You know, they're my kind of comedy, and they're they're my kind of funny. South Park, I love South Park. You know, what I'm yes, saying? I love There's South Park. Certain things that I'm not actually taking any intelligence from, but I feel like if a show can make me smile and is my kind of funny, it makes me laugh. Now, here's the thing with South really Park: like, that's people good. Good people get down on South Park, but South Park they br has and Family message. Guy they both bring up current events. They might disguise well, them as a South joke. South Park or does it better than anybody I've ever seen. Family a Guy, lot of those not as much. Content. Family Guy's more trying to just like crack jokes on yeah. stuff, whereas South Park will crack jokes the whole episode, but it can actually but have. It's actually referring to something this that's really South legit. Park, that's this week South Park blew my mind because it was I an Oculus see. Rift episode, but really? it was it basically it basically brought up simulation theory. And could all of this that we live in be a simulation and we don't even know? Could we literally, and I think about, I've brought this up to so many people, and it, it, it literally I can watch their brains start to hurt when they think about it. And, or a lot of people just, it's cognitive dissonance. They're like, 
Okay, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. But it's possible that it could be true. What if this is all a simulation and when we die, we literally take off the headset and we're just, we're like, we had an Oculus Rift on or something. You know what I'm saying? All right, so like, we're going to wrap like up the show. Like we're in the Matrix or something like that? Yeah, something like that. All right, so we're going to wrap up the show. We're going to, uh, well, I guess we'll see everybody on Wednesday. If you want to find us on Facebook, find us on Facebook.com slash 3 nm podcast. Um, you can email us at 3 nn at Outlook.com. I think Brian has Brian 3 nn at Outlook. Hotmail. Brian 3 nn at Hotmail.com. Um, you can find us on Google. Just type in 3 nn podcast or 3 nn episode, whatever episode you want to watch. So uh, thank you for joining us, and we will see you on we'll see Wednesday. You on a we special have, Wednesday edition. Not even a special Wednesday edition. Hopefully from now on we'll be doing two shows a week. Wednesday will be a little bit shorter. But it being but the first one makes it special. Yeah, we'll be doing Wednesday shows. So uh, I don't know. Everybody have a great week, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. You ready? Cue outro. <laughs> Cue outro. Hey, it's gonna hate. I'll laugh because you're fake. <laughs>